On this day, I was really hoping for sunshine. But these clouds were appropriate, because when you think about it, did the sailors always get to enjoy sunshine? That would be a no. But these paintings added some beautiful color to a dull day. I was excited to visit this museum, because ships and the entire enterprise of sailing and sea voyages have always been mysterious to me. If you're anything like me, museums really hit after you have left, when strange images dance around your head in your daily life, thanks to that museum. Museums really do help boost not only your knowledge, but your imagination. It costs adults like me $10 to get in. Admission is $5 for seniors, active military, and college students with ID, and youth under the age of 18 are free. They also say that their exhibits accommodate wheelchairs and walkers, but I can't comment on how true that is. And just so you know, I was one of the first people to enter the museum after killing some time by walking around the harbor. Now let's get in. The museum opened in 1991. It originally was called the Ventura County Maritime Museum, and it was located in Oxnard's Fisherman's Wharf across the channel. It moved to this location in 2012. The museum has two floors accessible via stairs or an elevator. There are mainly two types of exhibit on display, paintings and model ships. I documented just a few paintings, like this one from John Stobart, a modern painter, and this one from a 17th century painter. In fact, this is the oldest painting at the museum. It depicts a Dutch merchant fleet anchored off a rocky coast, potentially that of Italy. According to the museum website, this is a list of some of the main painters you can find in the museum. After doing a Google search of the artists, these images came up and I am showing you my favorites. Don't expect to find all of these at the museum, but you might find some of them. But I think maritime paintings are some of my favorites. Especially John Stobart. I love how he captures twilight and golden hour scenes. He was born in England and lived from 1929 to 2023. So he died pretty recently. And then here are just a few of the mind-blowingly detailed model ships in the museum. Then there is the Edward Marple exhibit. He made model ships as a hobby. He made nine models in his life, and they are considered to be among the most exquisite examples of ship model craftsmanship in existence. He lived from 1919 to 1993. His world-class method included the use of dental tools alongside various other kinds of tools. And why not a few shots of this fireplace and globe? On his desk is his last model, the unfinished HMS Prince. And this is the Sovereign of the Seas, one of Edward Marple's models. And then there is his model of the steamship Robert E. Lee. You know, I fantasize about steamships. And they had a cool painting of the Robert E. Lee. This has to be my favorite model in the museum. The modern Chinese junk. A junk is a type of ancient sailing ship in use as early as the Han Dynasty, roughly 220 BC to 200 AD. 
They evolved throughout the years and were used throughout Asia for extensive voyages. The structure and flexibility of the sails make them easier to sail and fast. What makes the ships truly unique is their ability to sail into the wind. This style of ship is still used today, although the use of this type of ship has heavily declined. According to the museum, the Chinese have a few naval inventions, including gunpowder, going back to the 10th century, catapult projected bombs, fire lances, flamethrowers, and the magnetic compass, going back to 221 BC. And then there is the Korean turtle ship, in use from the 15th century to the 19th century, primarily to fight Japanese naval forces. The turtle ship is often recognized as the first armored ship in maritime history. The name comes from its protective shell-like covering, similar to the hard exterior shell of a turtle. Sharp iron spikes deterred Japanese sailors from climbing aboard, or really any sailor, I guess. On the bow of the vessel was a dragon head which emitted sulfur smoke, making them harder to target. And the head was large enough to fit a cannon inside. There were many versions of turtle ship throughout history, but all ships were generally 100 to 120 feet long. These ships were slow, not meant for the high seas. Instead, they were meant for coastal defense. And then the Ming treasure ship from the 15th century. There was an entire Ming treasure fleet meant to display the power and majesty of the Ming dynasty while collecting tributes. They were rather large ships, estimated to be between 200 and 400 feet in length. Just like everything Oriental, Oriental maritime history and culture truly stands alone. Or should we say that it sails alone? And another model ship. But this one of the Golden Hind is really cool. Some of the most beautiful spots in California are named after Sir Francis Drake. He became the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. He sailed between Europe, Africa, North and South America, and Asia. The journey took 1,020 days, nearly three years. Five ships set sail, and only his returned. The voyage covered 36,000 miles, and he returned with an impressive load of treasure and jewels, worth 160,000 Elizabethan pounds at the time or almost half a billion dollars in today's money. I think this is one of those situations where the art speaks for itself. But I still want to say how I love the Mako shark jaw and all the shades of blue. And before I entered the museum, I shot this footage of the mystic whaler being boarded This ship was built in 1967 in Florida. It was operated for 26 years on the East Coast. Then it left the East Coast in 2021 and arrived in Oxnard, California in 2022. And hey look, a sea lion. These are a series of aerial pictures showing the evolution of Oxnard Harbor throughout the years. And there is an exhibit dedicated to Port Wainimi, which was created in 1937. According to the website, the port generates $11 billion in cargo value, $2.2 billion in overall economic impact, and $173 million in annual taxes. And it provides 20,000 jobs in the region. And this port is a major gateway for automotive vehicles and fresh produce.
And how could I not check out the gift shop? And this one has a really good selection of books and plush animals. I didn't get anything, but I will settle for you hitting that thumbs up button and maybe subscribing.